wait upon the Lord. And this is a timely lesson for the times we live it in. Uh, you know, a lot of people are in, living in fear. Fear of the unknown. Fear and distrust of other people. Uh, fear of uncertainty, fear of an attack on their health. A lot of people are living in this situation right now. You know, which, whereas, hey, just like I always say, just this same time, maybe a year and a half, almost two years ago, people was poking their chest out, acting like fear, hey, that, that, that has no place. Fear has no place in our society. You stare fear in the face. You know, listen to this TED talk about how I overcame my fear. But now fear is pretty prevalent in society, right? It's been welcomed back in with open arms. It's, there's a lot of fear now. You got a question? Laugh <laughs> 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 after the lesson, bro. <laughs> got it, got it. We, we, let's deal with that. At, it's all good. <laughs> it's all good. All right. Um, what was I? Okay. So this is a this is a great uh, concept that the Bible teaches us that hey, a lot of times, especially after you put in your work, you prayed to God, you've done what you need to do. Hey, it's time to be still and understand that God is in control. God is the one that is knowledgeable. And even kingdoms were moved, he uttered his voice, the earth melted. This is who we are in fear of. We are in fear of God because he is in control of all of this. Keep going. Verse 8. Come, behold the works of the Lord, that what desolations he hath made in the earth. Uh -huh. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder, he burneth the chariot in the fire. Uh -huh. Be still, and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. He said, hey, look, I know what I'm doing. You need to sit back and watch and understand that I'm, you know, I'm, I'm doing what I'm doing. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. Hey, we see how he does that. How did he do it in Egypt? How did he get exalted? He, he sent a ton of plagues out there. Mm -hmm. See, a plague, whereas, you know, an invite to church might not get your attention. <laughs> or, you know, a speech from somebody might not get your attention. You know, even some tragedy come, that, that'll get your attention for a time. But then you go right back to, hey, but you talking about a plague all over the world. Hey, that's going to get somebody's attention. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's going to make somebody stop and think. He said, I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Keep going. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Hey, that's, Selah. that's what we lean on. God is with us. He's our refuge. Hey, if you do, you doing what you can do to stand in the gap for God, to serve God and keep his commandments, to have allegiance with God, hey, he is with you. Are we finished with that? Yes. Psalm 104. <clears throat> Psalms 104. Psalms 104 and verse 1. Psalm 104 and verse 1. Okay, when you get there, go ahead. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty. Who covers thyself with light as with a garment? Who stretches out the heavens like a curtain? Uh -huh. Who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters? Who maketh the clouds his chariots? Who walketh upon the wings of the wind? Uh -huh. See, we got to give credit where credit is due. Mm-hmm. A lot of people give too much credit to man. You know, we know man got his tricks. He got stuff over his sleeve. He got abilities, things he can do. Right? 
Man, too much credit. Hey, man did not stretch out the sky, create the sky, administer the sky, put the lights in the sky. He didn't do any of that. Right? So whatever man does, it pales in comparison to the one who set all of this up. Again, we know man can manipulate a thing here or there, but that don't put him in control. We finished with that? Oh, keep going. I'm sorry. Verse 4. Who maketh his angel spirits, his ministers a flaming fire. Uh-huh. See, that's a whole other angle. That's a whole mm -hmm. other avenue. You're talking about a ton of other spirit beings out there. It's brilliant. We, we can't see them. So it's like, hey, you got you to gotta just go with what you believe based on what you can read. You got to go by faith. You can't even see everything. Go ahead. Who laid the foundations of the earth that it should not be removed forever. Mm -hmm. Thou coverest it with the deep as with a garment. The water stood above the mountains. At thy rebuke they fled. At thy voice of thy thunder they hasted away. Mm -hmm. They go up by the mountains. They go down by the valleys unto the place which thou hast founded for them. Mm -hmm. Thou hast set a bound that they may not pass over that they turn not again to cover the earth. Uh -huh. He sendeth the springs into the valleys which run among the hills. They give drink to every beast of the field. The wild asses quench their thirst. By them shall the, the fowls of the heaven have their habitation, which sing among the branches. He watereth the hills from his chambers. The earth satisfied with the fruit of thy works. He causeth the grass to grow for the cattle and herb for the service of the man, that he may bring forth food out of the earth, and wine that maketh glad the heart of man, and oil to make his face to shine, and bread which strengthen, which strengtheneth man's heart. Uh -huh. The trees of the Lord are full of sap, the cedars of Lebanon which he hath planted, where the birds make their nests. As for the stork, the fir trees are her house, the high hills are a refuge for the wild goats and the rocks for the conies. He appointed the moon for seasons. The sun knoweth his going down. Thou makest darkness, and it is night, wherein all the beasts of the forest to creep forth. The young lions roar after their prey and seek their meat from God. The sun ariseth. They gather themselves together and lay them down in their dens. Man goeth forth unto his work and to his labor until the evening. O Lord, how manifold are thy works. In wisdom hast thou made them all. The earth is full of thy riches. So is this great and wide sea, wherein are things creeping insinumerable, both small and great beasts. There go the ships. There is that Leviathan, whom thou hast made to play therein. These wait all upon thee, that thou mayest give them their meat in due season, that thou givest them they get. Sorry, that thou givest them, they gather. Thou openest thine hand, they are filled with good. Thou uh -huh. So he said, all these, he's given, hey, he's given us the vision of like what's going on. And see, it's a lot going on mm -hmm. in creation. Mm -hmm. We're caught up yeah. in our day to day. But you got all kinds of other living beings on this planet, all mm -hmm. kinds of other animals and different uh ecosystems and different uh, clans and groups of people who survive off of what God has given them. And by nature, say what? They, these all wait upon thee that thou mayest give them their meat in due season. Right? That's a, that's a staple on the earth. Right? A lot of, again, it's, it's good for us to look at the creator and a lot and a good way to do that is to look at creation. You can look all over creation and see things that's amazing to, to have you know and understand that God is amazing. He did all of this and is in control and all those things are, have been and are operating on all cylinders. Right? With no intervention, right? Those things are operating on their own. Matter of fact, a lot of times the intervention is causing a problem. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's when man gets involved that there's a problem that, that starts to happen. 
But again, it said, these all wait upon thee that thou mayest give them their meat in due season. So that's the mindset. Hey, that's, that's how we have to be. We want things when we want things. We want assurances when we want assurances. We want everything to fall in line on how we want it. But hey, that's not how it works. That's why the title lesson is be still and know that I am God. Wait upon the Lord. Verse 29. Thou hidest thy face. They are troubled. Thou takest away their breath. They die and return to the uh -huh. Thou sendest forth thy spirit. They are created of the Lord. O my soul, praise ye the Lord. We got some circumstances here, right? That make for, you know, a person being fearful and not really knowing how to proceed. Because Samuel told him he would be there, right, within a week. And a week went, and he's not there, and they, they surrounded by the enemy. So what did he say? Verse 9. And Saul said, bring hither a burnt offering to me, and peace offering. And he offered the burnt offering. Uh -huh. And it came to pass. So Saul went ahead and, and did, he made a move, right? Mm -hmm. He made a move. That wasn't what Samuel told him to do. Samuel told him to wait till he got there and then he would tell him what to do. Right. Samuel said he was going to be the one to yeah. deal with it. <laughs> but Saul, you know, started looking at the situation and then decided to start making some moves. And that's a lot of times how that'll happen. Mm -hmm. Even a variable thrown in that we don't expect, right? I'm sure he didn't expect uh, Samuel to not show up within a week. Mm -hmm. But even a variable we don't expect, hey, that's going to come into play. Hey, you still, we still have to toe the line and have faith and wait on God. Samuel didn't wait. He didn't wait on the Lord. We don't even see that he, he didn't seek the Lord. Right? He just went ahead and said what? And Saul, I'm sorry, Saul, this, did I say Saul? Saul didn't, Saul didn't seek the Lord on this. He said, it says, Saul said, Bring hither a burnt offering to me and peace offerings. And he offered a burnt offering. Verse 10. And it came to pass that as soon as he made an end of offering the burnt offering, behold, Samuel came. And that's normally how that happens, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> that's normally how that happens. Mm -hmm. Soon as you make that move, hey, if you'd have just waited <laughs> that last little piece, hey, if you wouldn't have had to make that move. You really had trepidations on making but it said, and it came to pass that as soon as, there's no coincidence it's telling us like that. Mm -hmm. As soon as he had made an end of the burnt offering, behold, Samuel came. Mm -hmm. Keep going. And Saul went out to meet him, that he might salute him. Uh -huh. And Samuel said, What's, what hast thou done? And Saul said, because I saw that the people were scattered from me, and that thou camest not within the days appointed, and that the Philistines gathered themselves together at Mishmash. Therefore said I, the Philistines will come down now upon me to Gilgal, and I have not made supplication unto the Lord. I forced myself therefore and offered a burnt offering. Uh -huh. And Samuel said to Saul, thou hast done foolishly. Uh -huh. See, so now once you commit to not waiting on the Lord, and we commit to okay, I'm going to go ahead and lean on my own understanding. I'm going to come up with whatever solution is. Now, hey, you got it. Now you're in that moment. Now, once the door has been opened to do what the Lord said, now you got to justify that this decision that you made on your own. And a lot of times that's the situation we find ourselves in when we don't wait on the Lord. He said, therefore, I said, I, the Philistines, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, did we read 12 already? Yeah, we read 12. Therefore said I, the Philistines will come down now upon me to Gilgal. So, so he, this hasn't actually happened. That, that didn't happen. So now he got to, he got to stand behind the idea that it's going to happen. See, he don't want that to happen, but because he made the move out of sequence, now it makes more sense that, that, you know, I made that move because I'm thinking that's going to happen. Right. So instead of being able to relish in, oh, that had this has not God has not allowed them to do this yet. So we still OK. Mm -hmm. We're still all right. Hey, we woke up and they still over there. They not over here messing with us. So we still OK. 
See, instead of being able to relish in that and be thankful for that, hey, now you got to backtrack on what was I thinking? Oh, I'm, I was scared, so I operated off of that. Said, therefore, said I, the Philistines will come down now upon me to Gilgal, and I have not made supplication unto the Lord. I forced myself, therefore, and offered a burnt offering. And Samuel said unto Saul, thou hast done foolishly. Keep going. Thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God. Uh -huh. See, this is the key. See, these circumstances and situations are designed solely to see if we're going to Stick with the Lord or not. Again, notice right after he made that decision and he went through with it, then, hey, okay, what's over there? Go ahead, go ahead, you know. Here goes Sam, here goes Samuel to see what's going on. He said, thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, which he commanded thee. Keep going. For now would the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever. Uh-huh. But now thy kingdom shall not continue. The Lord hath sought him a man after his own heart, and the Lord hath commanded him to be captain over his people, because thou hast not kept that which the Lord commanded thee. Uh -huh. See, he didn't wait. He didn't hold on to the fact that, hey, God is in control. God knows what's going on. God told me to do this. So whatever this circumstance is, hey, I can't let go of what God told me to do. I got to wait on the Lord to reveal the circumstance, but no matter what, I'm going to hold on to what God has instructed me to do. That's the message in this lesson, in this, what we're reading here in this story. We finished with that? Yes. Let's go to Psalm 59. See, and we might be, we ain't no might to it. We're going to be forced, we're going to be faced. With a lot of decisions in these coming times. Hey, we're being faced with decisions now. We're being faced with decisions now. Very, uh, uncomfortable situation. Where it's going to be easier to say, you know, well, hey, I, I thought this was going to happen. So I just went ahead and did this because it's easier to deal with that situation than to wait on the Lord. We're going to find ourselves in more and more situations like that. <clears throat> Psalm 59 and verse 1. Psalms 59 and verse 1. Okay, when you get there, go ahead. Deliver me from mine enemies, O my God. Defend me from them that rise up against me. Uh -huh. Deliver me from the workers of iniquity and save me from bloody men. Mm -hmm. For lo, they lie in wait for my soul. The mighty are gathered against me. Not for my transgression, nor for my sin, O Lord. Mm -hmm. They run and prepare themselves without my fault. Awake to help me. And behold, thou therefore, O Lord, God of hosts, the God of Israel, awake to visit all the heathen. Be not merciful to any wicked transgressors. Uh -huh. Selah. Uh -huh. They return at evening. They make a noise like a dog and go round about the city. Behold, they belch out with their mouth. Swords are in their lips. For who say they doth, doth hear? But thou, O Lord, shall laugh at them. Thou shall have all the heathen in derision. Uh -huh. So he said, hey, their mindset is nobody can see what I'm doing. And nobody can stop me from doing what I'm doing. So I can do it however I want to do I can have a sword in hand. I can say what I can let whatever come out of my mouth. There's not going to be any consequences. He's showing us that, hey, this is their mind. This is the mindset of the wicked that are persecuting, that are causing the tumult. He said, behold, they belch out with their mouth, swords are in their lips, for they say, for who they say doth hear. Who, who going to do something? <laughs> you even got that story of that king. He's like telling Hezekiah, I'm going to come and I'm going to take over and who's going to stop me? Said verse 8, but thou, O Lord, shalt laugh at them. Thou shalt have all the heathen in derision. Verse 9. Because of his strength will I wait upon thee, for God is my defense. See, the, that's, read that again, verse 9. Because of his strength will I wait upon thee, for God is my defense. See, that's a defense too. A lot of times we, mm -hmm. we, so I'm saying two, but I'm but really that is the defense. But I'm saying in our mind, and it's all of us, me included. 
Don't think I'm telling you this because I know all of this has just got it mastered. We all are work in progress. We, we working on this all together. But my point is, hey, a lot of times in these situations we find ourselves in, we scrutinize like, you know, I'm only being left with this option or this option. And I'm here to tell you, hey, you gotta, there's another option. We can ask the Lord to deliver us from this situation. That's the option. Right? God can deliver us. He said, because of his strength will I wait upon thee, for God is my defense. This is how I'm going to get out of this. This is how I'm going to deal with this. I'm going to let the Lord deal with it, and I'm going to wait for his way in. Let him weigh in on it. Verse 10. The God of my mercy shall prevent me. God shall let me see my desire upon mine enemies. Uh -huh. Slay them not, lest my people forget. Scatter them by thy power and bring them down, O Lord, our shield. Uh -huh. For the sin of their mouth and the words of their lips, let them even be taken in their pride and for crushing and lying which they speak. Uh -huh. Read 12. Oh, again. sorry. Yeah, yeah. For, the, for the sin of their mouth and the words of their lips, let them even be taken in their pride and for cursing and lying which they speak. Uh, skip down to 16 and go ahead. But I will sing of thy power, yea, I will sing aloud of thy mercy in the morning. For thou hast been my defense and refuge in the day of my trouble. Unto thee, O my strength, will I sing. For God is my defense and the God of my mercy. Uh -huh. So God is imploring us to beseech him, to wait on him, to, to find refuge in him and his strength. Are we finished with that? Yes. Second Chronicles 20. Second Chronicles 20. Second Chronicles 20 and verse 1. 20 and 1. Okay, go ahead. It came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and with them other beside the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side, Syria. And behold, they be in Hazazon Tamar, which is in Gedi. And, and Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. Mm -hmm. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. Mm -hmm. And Jeho Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, O Lord God of our fathers, art thou not, art not thou God in heaven and rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathen? And in thine hand, is there not power and might so that none is able to withstand thee? Uh -huh. Art not thou our God who didst drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel and gave us it to the seed of Abraham, thy friend forever? Mm -hmm. And they dwelt therein and have built and have had built thee a sanctuary therein for thy name, saying, if when evil cometh upon us as the sword judgment or pestilence or famine we stand before this house and in thy presence for thy name is in this house and cry unto thee in our affliction then thou will hear and help and now behold the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir whom thou wouldest not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt but they turned from them and destroyed them not behold I say how they reward us to come to cast us out of thy possession, which thou hast given us to inherit. O oh, our God, will thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. And all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. Look what he said. He said, O oh God, will thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us, 
neither know we what to do. He, hey, he's keeping <laughs> it real. I don't know what to do in this situation. <laughs> but this is an example to us. Hey, we find ourselves in situations where we don't know what to do. I have no idea how to deal with this. <laughs> hey, he's bringing that. He, what well, he does know something to do, right? Because mm-hmm. he is mm-hmm. bringing an organized petition to the Lord right here. Right. Most people put stuff like this together to bring before a court. <laughs> right? You got to go to court behind something like, I need, to, I need to bring it like this, and I need to have this, and then we're going to deal with this, right? And then you go before and present your, present your case. He taking this to the Lord. Like, Lord, these people that, hey, remember, you said they couldn't do nothing with them because they didn't do anything at first. That's the only reason they're here right now, because our forefathers didn't do what you said. But now, this is how they're trying to repay us. And we in a great strait. We don't know what to do. Said so then all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives and their children. Verse 14. Then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, the son of Jeiel, the son of Madaniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, came the spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. Uh-huh. And he said, hearken ye all Judah and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem and thou king Jehoshaphat. Thus saith the Lord unto you. Be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook, before the wilderness of Jer- Jeruel. Uh-huh. Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Ye- set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you. O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dissem, for the Lord will be with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants and inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. And the Levites of the children of the Kohathites and of the children of the Korites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on uh-huh. high. Uh huh. And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord, and that should praise the beauty of holiness. As they went out before the army, and to say, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endureth forever. And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, every one helped to destroy another. And when Judah came toward the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude, and behold, they were dead. There were dead bodies fallen to the earth, uh-huh. and none escaped. Uh-huh. And when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil of them, they found among them in abundance both riches with the dead bodies and precious jewels, which they stripped off for themselves more than they could carry away and they were three th- and were, they were three days in gathering of the spoil it was so much so let's take a look at what just happened here they didn't have to lift a finger they didn't do anything the king was wise enough to understand who was in control and who to go to and what this was all about this whole situation was designed to see what the, how they was going to deal with it, right? Mm-hmm. And they dealt with it the right way. They focused on God. The Lord said, okay. Mm-hmm. And the Lord handled They didn't even mm-hmm. lift a finger. And then came, it came, mm-hmm. turned out to be a huge <laughs> blessing for them. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's how the hand of the Lord operates. So, again, we, we, we must remember that in these times where we find ourselves from moment to moment with, with situations facing us where 
it appears it would be easier to go against what God is talking about. A lot of times people feel like, oh, it'd be easier to just, let me just deal with it this way. Let me just go ahead. They, these people giving me these couple uh, options, and I don't really want to do that. And this ain't really what the Lord is telling me to do, but let me just go ahead and pick with the lesser of the evils of these options, mm -hmm. you know, so I could just get that situation behind me. No, we, we need to be still and wait on God. That's literally what they did, right? Yeah. They said, we don't know what to do. We just say, hey, we don't have no choice. We're going to wait on the Lord. So it said, and when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil, so now they, they went from being scared of being decimated to being dealing with a whole bunch of spoil. They found among them in abundance both riches with the dead, with the dead bodies and precious jewels, which they stripped off for themselves more than they could carry. And they were three days in gathering of the spoil. It was so much. The, the <laughs> people that came against these people who were dealing with the true God ended up being dead bodies on the floor while they stripping them of riches. Verse 26. And on the fourth day, they assembled themselves in the valley of Baraka, for they, for there they blessed the Lord. Therefore, the name of the same place was called the valley of Baraka uh -huh. unto this day. Uh -huh. Then they returned every man of Judah and Jerusalem and Jehoshaphat in the forefront of them to go again to Jerusalem with joy. For the Lord had made them to rejoice over their enemies. Uh -huh. And they came to Jerusalem with psalteries and harps and trumpets unto the house of the Lord. And we fear of God, and the fear of God was on all the kingdoms of those countries when they had heard that the Lord fought against the enemies of Israel. Uh -huh. So the realm of Jehoshaphat was quiet for his God gave him rest round about. Uh -huh. See, that's the Lord. The Lord say, hey, he's going to be exalted in the earth. And when he does things, hey, people take note. I've even experienced that with, you know, things that my family has gone through and family members are, are nearby and they see the Lord deliver us from something. Hey, that has a profound effect on them. Mm -hmm. When you wait on God and let God do what he's doing, hey, that becomes a testimony to them. Mm -hmm. We finished with that? Yes. Okay, let's go to Daniel chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3, <clears throat> in verse 1. Daniel 3, and verse 1. Okay, go ahead. Nebuchadnezzar, the king, made an image of gold, whose height was threescore cubits, and the breadth thereof six cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura, in the province of Babylon. Uh-huh, so we got Nebuchadnezzar here, who is about to set up something to make people bow down to it and worship it. You're going to set up a statue. Again, hey, I'm here to tell you this is coming to a theater near us very soon. <laughs> this is where the world is headed. The world, according to the Bible, the world is headed to a situation much like this, mm -hmm. where you're going to have to openly pledge real allegiance, right? Mm -hmm. It's not just about singing a song or putting your hand over your heart. You're going to have to pledge allegiance through taking a mark that's going to have 666 on it. That's what the Bible is telling us. That's where this is all going, right? What's going on now is the, really the calm before the storm. Mm -hmm. This is just the, the, what you call like the little practice test. Some little quick quizzes and practice exams to see where you, you know, you get the grade so you can see where you at. Okay, this is, this is where I'm at. I got some, got some work to do. Right, I got some studying to do. That's what's going on right now. Verse 2, go ahead. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, sent to gather together the princes, the governors, and the captains, the judges, the
the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Mm -hmm. Then the princes, the governors, and captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces were gathered together unto the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. So everybody's in agreement, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody's in agreement. Said that princes, the governors, the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers are in agreement. Hey, they all for it. Right? So that's the, that's the state of the world that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that's what they were dealing with. Mm -hmm. Everybody's for, hey, you going to, hey, they, when is the dedication? Oh, yeah, it's next week. <laughs> yeah, I just got my suit. Yeah, you going, yeah. <laughs> right, that, was right, a, right. that was the scenario. <laughs> that's what they're dealing with. Announcements and stuff. Yeah, you know, blow the trumpets. We're going to have, you know, so and so forth and so on. That's, that's what they were dealing with. Mm -hmm. All the while, they like, okay, hey, we, let me prepare myself because when this happens, <laughs> that's when they all going to realize <laughs> I'm not with it. <laughs> that's, what, that's the reality of what they were dealing with. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Uh -huh. Then a herald cried aloud to you, it is commanded, O people, nations, and languages, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. Uh huh. And hey, you might have had some, you might have even, it stands to reason that there were even some other people there who really didn't want to do it. That stands to reason too, right? You got your group that's all for it. Hey, they're going with the status quo. Then you got your, your group of people who, hey, they quiet because they really don't want to do it. <laughs> but they really don't know what else to do and don't want to stick out like a sore thumb. So they doing it, but they got trepidation. Right? But that's the scenario. Keep going. And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth, Shall the, sh shall the same hour be cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. See, that's the, that's the component that's making everybody conform. That's the component that's making those who really don't want to do it consider doing it. Mm -hmm. That's the component, right? Because when it gets down to it, hey, if you don't have that ultimate... Uh, sovereign God who you fear commanding you not to do something you don't have a reason strong enough to go against this that's the reality of the situation whatever reason you think is strong like you know my ethics and my morals and you know I'm not gonna let nobody push me around all that go out the window when they start talking about throwing somebody in the fire so you gotta have something that's strong enough and sound enough to lean on in this time to not go with it. So he said, and whoso falleth not down and worship shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. Verse 7. Therefore, at that time when all the people heard the second, no, sorry, the sound of of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and all kinds of music, all the people, the nations, and the languages fell down and worshiped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Uh -huh, okay, skip down. Oh, verse 8. Are we, did, are we at verse 8? <laughs> yeah, we verse eight. Go ahead. <laughs> Wherefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. Uh -huh. They spake and said to the king, Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. Uh huh. Uh, skip down to verse 12. 12. There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon. Uh -huh. so, so now, hey, you got all types of politics going on here. Mm -hmm. You know, we can see with Daniel that you had some that were hating on Daniel, on Daniel's ascension in the ranks and the power he was getting. And even here, you got some Chaldeans who, hey, they, they, they ready and waiting to point out <laughs> that some people ain't going along with it. And they even going to say, hey, you know them dudes that you put over? 
You know, the ones that you set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, the ones you think you could trust, you think they so cool and great. Guess what? They not going with what you put down. They not going for it. They not doing it. They not obeying your command. See, this is, hey, this, this, this is this, the position that one will find themselves in when the world starts making you make it known where you stand with this stuff. That's what we're looking at here, right? right. Said so there are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon. See, they try and get under the skin. So you made them, you made a mistake putting them in charge. Uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, these men, O king, have not regarded thee. They not listen. They don't care what you're saying. They, they, they have not regarded thee. They serve not thy God, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Verse 13. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Uh -huh. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Uh -huh. Now, if ye be ready, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet? See, he want to see it for himself. See, they done got under his skin. See, King, you thought you could trust them. You made them rulers. They not even listening to what you said. What? Where they at? <laughs> Are they for real? They tell the truth. Look, we're going to play the music right now. We're going to go. I need to see this for myself. <laughs> Are y'all really going to not do what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He said, now, if you be ready that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, keep going. You fall down and worship the image which I have made. Uh -huh. Well, but if you worship not. Ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. Uh -huh. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? See, now it's on the table. Now it's on the table. Mm -hmm. See, all the, the, the big mm -hmm. conflict that has been in the background because, hey, they, ain't nobody really brought it up. And, you know, they trying to be, uh, you know, functioning members of society. There's no reason not to. Hey, it's time to be live peaceable with all men. Hey, that's all going on and it's all good mm -hmm. until you start bringing God to the forefront mm -hmm. and people got to start making decisions. Mm -hmm. So it's all coming to the front. Nebuchadnezzar is saying, hey, what, 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 what is this God? All right. yeah. What is this God that's going to get you out of what this situation that I'm putting you in? See, that takes a real God. Mm -hmm. That takes, you mm -hmm. know, so he's showing like what God you dealing with. Right. That you think is going to deliver you from this. He said, and who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Verse 16. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. Uh-huh. See, hey, politics is out the window at this point. You done brought up God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you trying to make us make a decision. So now this ain't the time to be political. We, we done with that. Mm -hmm. When it comes to this, we're not careful to answer you with this. Mm -hmm. Verse 17. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of thine hand, O uh -huh. king. Uh -huh. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Uh-huh, so he said, hey, this is what it is. Our God can deliver us, and he's going to deliver us out of your hands. But hey, if it, if, even if it don't go the way we would like it to go, even if we go in that furnace and we burn up and we perish, we are not going to deviate from what we understand we need to do concerning God. Period. End of story. That's what mm -hmm. they're saying, right? Right. Hey, it done got to this point. Here it is. We not bound down to your God. Do what you got to do. That's what they're showing, right? Mm -hmm. You talking about, hey, they, they had ascended up to rulers in Babylon. They had been dealing with, it clearly looked like they're dealing with jealousy, 
They, you know, we see Daniel got plotted on. All that, they didn't got past all that. Hey, a lot of people wouldn't want to give that up. A lot of people wouldn't want to give that up. Why would God bless me with this position if he don't want me to stay here? I, if I don't oversee everything, then hey, it might not be as good for the Jews. Hey, you know, we can come up with some stuff to... But it looked like their mindset, like, they, hey, we, we know this is coming. So we need to prepare ourselves to take that stand when it's time. Because that's what they did, right? Mm -hmm. Knowing what effect it's going to have. Verse 19. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury. Uh -huh. And the form of his visage was changed, was, sorry, yes, was changed against Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Right, because clearly they had favor with him. He, they, he put him up, he set him over Babylon with Daniel. Clearly they had favor. That's, that's out the window now. So they, so they clearly, they clearly didn't value the favor of the king over the commandments of God. And again, it's a time and a place for everything, right? Because this went all the way up. Hey, how long did they know this was coming? Mm -hmm. They putting posters up. They said they got to erect the statue, right? <laughs> they got to put the statue together, erect it, set everything up, set the date, put the, you know, promote it, get the word out. They got to do all that. Mm -hmm. And they are at the top of the food chain. So they are mm -hmm. there in the planning. You know, they there while all that's being planned. This is what we're going to do, you know, we got to get this province to come out and everybody got to come out. How are we going to organize that? They got to do all that. They know all that's coming. Wasn't until this day that it was like, hey, you putting it on the table, this is the answer. We're not doing it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're not doing it. As soon as you put it on the table, that's when you're going to get your answer. So he said, then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury and the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Keep going. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. Uh-huh, like that. We're going to really burn y'all up. Everybody else is going to get burned up. But we're going to really <laughs> burn y'all up. Keep going. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to, to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Uh -huh. Then these men were bound in their coats, their, hose, their hosen, and their hats, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, was astonied, and rose up in the haste, and spake, and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form. Of the fourth is like the son of God. Uh huh. The so hey, so we see they being protected. We see they being delivered, like they had the faith to be. But I always like to point out with this story because the title of the lesson is "Be still and know that I am God." Wait upon the Lord. I always like to point out when you come when you talk about this story. These brothers waited and went all the way to even receiving the punishment that they were. Like, it wasn't like they didn't have to go in the furnace. Yeah. Right? Like, we think wait on the Lord is I'm going to wait till whatever <laughs> is, I'm afraid of happening, happening. That's wait on the Lord. <laughs> but they went past that. They actually mm -hmm. went into the furnace, mm -hmm. which is where the fear was, right? Mm -hmm. The fear, I mean, not the fear, but that's where the punishment, the, pro the problem was. Yeah. You know, we really would rather not go in this furnace. But they waited even into going into the furnace and being in the furnace. So what is that? That's, what's that showing us? Hey, you might even have to go into the middle of the fire. 
and the Lord can still deliver and preserve. You still will have to wait on the Lord even in that situation. Read that last verse again. Where we at? 25? 25. Okay, yes. go ahead. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Uh -huh. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace, and spake, and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth, and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire mm -hmm. and the princes governors and captains and the king's counselors being gathered together saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power nor was a hair of their head of their head singed neither were their coats char changed nor the smell of fire had passed on them mm -hmm. the nebuchadnezzar spake so they completely untouched you talking about the people that threw them in the fire got killed the people that threw them in the fire got killed. They clothes don't even smell like fire. That's the God that we serve. That's the God we serve. Mm -hmm. But again, we wouldn't be reading about this story or dealing with what God did for them if they didn't wait on God all the way to this point. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who hath sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Uh -huh. Therefore, I make a decree that every people, nation, and language which speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces, and their houses shall be made this a dunghill. good for decrees, <laughs> ain't he? He's just ready to do something. <laughs> so now he's making the decree, though, for the God of Israel. Because mm -hmm. what? Because of the faith mm -hmm. and patience of his servant. Mm -hmm. And again, that's this, you know, this is these, that's what these situations are designed to do. They're designed to exalt God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this takes some, this takes some strength and some faith right here. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Because there is no other God that can deliver after this sort. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. Okay, is that it? Yes. All right, that's good. Let's go to Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. And verse 35. Mark chapter 4. In verse 35. 4 and 35. Okay, go ahead. And the same day when the evening was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, what manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Uh -huh. So again, that's a good example. Hey, they got the Lord right there in the ship with them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you got some turbulence coming and it's, it, it's even high turbulence. It looks like it's going to be real problems. And the Lord mm -hmm. is requiring them to be faithful in the midst of that. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Exodus 14. Exodus 14. 
Exodus 14 and verse 1. Exodus 14 and verse 1. Okay, when you get there, go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they turn and encamp before Pahiroth, between Migdal and the sea, over against ba Baalzephon, before it shall ye encamp by the sea. For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, They are entangled in the land, the wilderness hath shut them in. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, that he shall follow and she, he shall follow after them, and I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his host, that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord, and they did so. And it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled, and the heart of Pharaoh and of his servants was turned against the people. And they said, Why have we done this? What, sorry, why have we done this, that we have let Israel go from serving us? Uh huh. So Pharaoh wanted to keep that grip. They was benefiting from the enslavement of the Israelites. Yeah, that's, mm -hmm. that's, that's what basically what I'm trying mm -hmm. to show. Mm -hmm. Hey, they wanted to let the people go because they still benefiting from the people. So it would, be a, it would put them at a disadvantage to let these people go. So he said, it was told to the king at the, of Egypt that the people fled and the heart of Pharaoh and the heart of his servants was turned against the people. And they said, why have we done this that we have let Israel go from serving us? Mm -hmm. Notice it wasn't just Pharaoh, it was Pharaoh and all the people. Hey, they agreed that, hey, we're doing, <laughs> we doing good with them being our servant. Verse 6. And he made ready his chariot and took his people with him. And he took 600 chosen chariots and all the chariots of Egypt and captains over every one of them. Uh -huh. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And he pursued after the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out with an high hand. Mm -hmm. But the Egyptians pursued after them all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh and his horsemen and his army and overtook them encamping by the sea beside Pahiroth be before Baalsephon. So notice it said the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh. So even though the Lord's plan was to deliver his people from Pharaoh, he hardened Pharaoh's heart. Now look at that. Mm -hmm. Why? Because, hey, it's the people got to understand who's doing this. Everybody got to understand who's in control of this. Mm -hmm. Right? It ain't about the people. Hey, he, he kept sending Moses to Pharaoh saying, let my people go, right? Mm -hmm. And the Pharaoh wouldn't do it. Pharaoh wouldn't do it. So finally the Lord whooped up on Pharaoh so much. God whooped up on Pharaoh so much, and that's what made Pharaoh say, okay, y'all could go, right? Mm -hmm. When the firstborn, when it touched Pharaoh's house, mm -hmm. when God touched Pharaoh's house, that's when Pharaoh said, okay, we're going to let him go. But then the Lord hardened his heart again. He said, nah, we, nah why are we doing this? Mm -hmm. Keep going. Verse 10. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. And they were sore afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. Uh -huh. And they said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Uh -huh. So again, there you go. This, this, this faith is being tested again. Right? Because they got out of there. They saw what the Lord did to Egypt. They saw the plague. They saw the Passover. They saw the firstborn getting slain. You see in the power of God. But with each trial and each test and each situation where, you know, it's designed to make us fearful. Hey, we, we have the uh, we have the ability to slip back into that fear and lose faith. And that's what's going on. That's what they're doing here. Right. They said unto Moses, because there were no graves in Egypt, has thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? See, I, they, I don't really want to be in this situation. At least in slavery, I knew, or at least I thought I knew, because how do you really know? Because somebody else is in control. But at least in slavery, you know, I know what that is. I'm going to deal with that. 
I'm going to pick the lesser evil. But now we're going to come out here, we, they're going to kill us. Right? Again, that's, that's what, you know, when you're dealing man, dealing with man, and you start looking at the options that man is laying out on the table, and you start assessing the situation based on the options that man is giving, right? Which in this case, it would be, you know, y'all left slavery, now y'all going to die, right? That's what they thinking the options are. That's what they thinking it is. Keep going. Wherefore, Hassel dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt. Uh, and mad at the deliverer. <laughs> mad at the deliverance plan because of the way that the adversary is laying out the options and putting you in a precarious situation. Keep going. Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. Uh -huh. So you're choosing, you're choosing of those options, right? Either serve the Egyptians or die in the wilderness. Those are the options. How that's the only option. <laughs> but that's how it feels in the, in the, in the midst of it, right? Mm -hmm. That's how it feels when they start laying out these options. Like, ah, I don't want to do that. But then I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So this is showing us, hey, these aren't, these aren't even the options. Keep going. And Moses said unto the people, fear ye not, uh -huh. stand still. What did he tell them to do? Stand still. Stop being so busy trying to make a decision and do something. And just stand still and wait on God. That's why the title lesson is be still and know that I am God. Wait upon the Lord. That's what Moses told him, right? And Moses said unto the people, fear ye not. Stand still. Keep going. And see the salvation of the Lord, uh -huh. which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. Uh -huh. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. So be quiet. Stand still. Watch what the Lord going to do. Don't, don't worry about these, whatever options they laying out, whatever you think the options are. Don't worry about all that. Let the Lord do what he's doing. We finish with that? Yes. Matthew 6 and two more after this. Matthew chapter 6. And two more after this. Matthew 6 and 25. 6 and 25. Okay, go ahead. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Behold, the fowl, the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or whither withal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself, sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Judge not that. Okay. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah, no, we good. That's, too far. That's it. <laughs> All right, Isaiah 30. Yeah, that was self explanatory. I don't even need no breakdown. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 30. 
in verse 1, and we got one more after this. Isaiah 30 and verse 1. Isaiah 30 and 1. Okay, when you get there, go ahead. Woe to the rebellious children, saith the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me, and that cover with a covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. Now, this is, look at what he's saying here. Mm -hmm. Woe to the rebellious children, saith the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me, and that cover with a covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. Verse 2. That walk. To go down into Egypt and have not asked at my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. Uh -huh. Therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame and the trust in the shadow of Egypt your confusion. For his princes were at Zoan and his ambassadors came to Hanus uh -huh. that they were all ashamed of a people that could not profit them nor be in help nor profit but a shame and also a reproach, the burden of the beast of the south into the land of trouble and anguish from whence come the young and old lion, the viper and fiery flying serpent. They will carry their riches upon the shoulders of young asses and their treasures upon the bunches of camels to a people that shall not profit them. For the Egyptians shall help in vain and to, and to no purpose. Therefore have I cried, Concerning this, their strength is to sit still. Uh huh. See, that would have been the better, the better thing would be to wait on God mm -hmm. instead of trying to get somebody. You know, this is about what, kind of what we was dealing with the other lesson when Israel was trying to get Egypt to help them. You know, you're trying to get somebody else outside of God. Hey, you pray to God and he leads you somewhere. That's one thing. But you don't seek God at all and then go try to get somebody else to help you. Hey, that's, that's not as servants of God should operate, right? Mm -hmm. So one last place, Jeremiah 14. So again, especially, hey, these times that we're facing now and what's to come, it's, it's good to know that, hey, the Lord is instructing us to be still and wait upon him. So we don't always have to feel like we got to make a move or got to make a decision. Hey, a lot of stuff, you know, I don't know about y'all, but hey, I, you know, I find myself situated. I'm like, man, I, hey, I don't, I have no idea where this is going. Ain't no reason for me to try to act like I'm going to be able to figure this one out. You have to wait, on, you know, and see how the Lord do this one too. <laughs> Yeah, I don't have no, I got nothing. <laughs> Last verse, Jeremiah 14, verse 19. Jeremiah 14 and 19. Okay, when you get there, go ahead. Hast thou utterly rejected Judah? Hath thy soul loathed Zion? Why hast thou smitten us, and there is no healing for us? We looked for peace, and there is no good. And for the time of healing... And behold, trouble. We acknowledge, O Lord, our wickedness and the iniquity of our fathers, for we have sinned against thee. Do not abhor us for thy namesake. Do not disgrace the throne of thy glory. Remember, break not thy covenant with us. Are, they, are there any among the, va the vanities of the Gentiles that can cause rain? Or can the heavens give showers? Mm -mm. No, they cannot. <clears throat> Keep going. Are not thou he, O Lord, our God? Therefore, we will wait upon thee, for thou hast made all these things. Okay, and that was, be still and know that I am God. Wait upon the Lord. And I hope you got some understanding in the mighty name of Jesus. Sabbath announcements. We welcome you and hope today's lesson increased your knowledge of the Holy Bible. CDs and DVDs of the Sabbath lessons are available. Please place your order and donation in the offering envelope and it will be filled on the next Sabbath. Please join us for question and answer today from 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. 
We also have question and answer every Wednesday via telephone conference line. The phone number and access code are located at the top of the lesson handout or watch the live stream of question and answer at www.thykingdomcome7.com. If you feel you are ready to be baptized, please place your name on the list at the podium and or speak with Brother Lee. Remember to follow the dress code when attending our services. Men are to remove hats and all head coverings during the service times. Women should wear head coverings such as a hat or scarf during the service according to 1 Corinthians 11, 1 through 7. All clothing should be modest in appearance, nothing tight fitting, overly baggy, sagging or revealing should be worn. If your child becomes restless during the Bible lesson, we encourage you to remove your child from the room until he or she has settled. Your tithes and offerings are always appreciated. Please place your tithes and offerings in an offering envelope and deposit it in the offering box located on the literature table. Pray for our strength as we pray for you. Until next Sabbath, peace. Peace. Okay, so uh, in other announcements, um, so... I went ahead and did a tally. I told you guys I would give a tally every every uh, week to see how close we are to the giveaway amount, so we can go do the giveaway. So praise God, we we hit the amount. We had 975. Which <laughs> praise God, that's great work, everybody. So that's wonderful. So we're gonna set it up for next week, right? Yeah, next week. We're gonna shoot for next week. So what we'll do is on Sunday, uh, and any anybody that wants to volunteer, you know, I figure we. We'll just take a group of people down to uh, whatever location. Yeah, Brother think Justin about the uh, Trinity Bellwoods. Scouting out locations. And we're going to keep it simple. We're just going to go down there and 